and 90 degree yield. Now, clear it out. It didn't move a bit. Which is kind of hard to do if you're all alone and you got zero help. Can you push this in? See, I got three hands to take care of. And I can't do it right. He complains on every single cut. He cut it crooked, okay? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Say what? Um, it's another day. Five days later. We did stuff on other cars in the meantime and I had to work. So next thing is the water pump. Oh. So, which we will not prematurely replace, okay? Of course not. If this one is still not rattling or having play, plus it has a metal rotor, it's a good one. Yep. What am I lecturing about the pump? Well, I was not done talking. I'm sorry. You, you gotta look for so that because... Thing. But it looks a bit bigger than the one I have. Hmm. Okay, so Vera is still fascinated that this pump goes in here and I can look through. See here. Hello. So that is really <laughs> baffling here. Okay. Even though it's my third engine. I'm worried about this o-ring being too big. That really sucks. That's what I said. You didn't believe me. It is probably for the Gen 2 engine then. We use the old one. This is easy to replace. I probably cut this out of the video and nobody will ever... No, because I made a big deal that the o-ring is too big. It's not a 17-year-old o-ring we are putting no, back in. No. It's, it's 11 Newton meters max, so don't use a uga -duga. That's not a uga -duga. That's maybe a ugi dugi. Next item, I'm done. There is a water connection piece from Land Rover going here into the engine block. It is only available from Land Rover. There is no aftermarket. And there are basically two pieces out of plastic in the water circuit which can break. And that's this one and this one. And both of them we replaced. I think we also replaced it even on that Gen 2 engine with 64,000 kilometers on. I think on that one I replaced the O-ring only. I don't want to get embarrassed later on and you know, be stranded on the canning stock road and then getting towed from someone. And when I'm asked what's going on with the vehicle, aren't you the guys from LR Time? I go like, yeah, a plastic piece broke. I thought about maybe we, we travel first to Iceland. <laughs> we got big plans, I realize now. We go to Iceland. Yeah. Good idea. No, I really think so. Do they have a canning stock road in Iceland? Yes, and even cooler. And we have a diesel heater. You happy with this piece? Oh yes. The old one we take with us on the canning stock route and when another guy is stranded we put it in as a spare part and then we're still gonna be the heroes. Okay and to Iceland. I put these now on 42 to 48 newton meters. This gotta be the best quality bearing ever made. So you didn't get me new pulley wheels? No we don't. The timing is new on your car remember? Yes. Uh, we did, did I get new pulley wheels then? Let me just say yes. You put this little plastic piece in here so it's in place. Yeah. Yeah. If they fall off, you get a new engine. Thank you. It's cleaning again. Okay, yeah, it's kind of addictive, okay? He clean. would be the perfect match to Sarah and Tune. My universal tool here. This is keyed here. My crankshaft is timed right now. Here's the pin, the timing yeah. pin. Into the key. There. Oh, that's what you meant. We have new bolts because we already used our old bolts three times. And I gotta make sure I keep the camshaft here in this area where it is not hitting with the valves onto the piston. Oh my god. 80 newton meters. Minimum torque is 100 newton meter, maximum torque is 200 newton meter. So I got it set to about 130 newton meters. You can see that the support is made in such a way that I'm absolutely free here, not hitting anything with the valves. I gotta Let's go 90 so. degrees. Oh, that was early. But the torque's not climbing, so that's okay. And you don't have to insert in timing, uh, the timing thing. Not yet. Okay, I'm going 90 degree. You gotta hold down. Yeah. And you don't wanna lift this more than 3.25 inches, then we're gonna hit the valves. And 90 degree yield. Now. It didn't move a bit. Installing both timing pulleys now loosely so that they can still rock back and forth. So I didn't get a new belt. 
No, because it's marked in the direction of rotation <laughs> and it's only 30,000 kilometers old. Now what's important here is that my crankshaft is set against the timing pin on this side. But as you can see, there is no flywheel yet. So I have a timing pin here set in the side. Watch it. At a hard end stop here with that timing pin. And that means that cylinder one is top that sender. Um, let me phrase that in the German precision way. It's 30 degrees off top dead center in direction of rotation. You know, measure top dead center with an indicator and then rotate with an angular protractor 30 degrees. That's that position. Oh. Which is kind of hard to do if you're all alone and you got zero help. Can you push this in? There you go. From got replaced job. by a ratchet. <laughs> Oh, come on. It's embarrassing if it takes that long. There it is. Okay. So are you sure I did it correctly here? You did it correctly. Oh my God. Just imagine if the timing is off. Locking pin on this side. Now I set the drive belt on. And what I got to make sure is that this is turned counterclockwise and I catch the next available tools, go over below this pulley wheel. Then same here, counterclockwise, catch the next available tools and then mount the tensioner in here. The tensioner is one of the only bolts why I actually apply blue Loctite. The original Land Rover bolt was only an 8.8, .8, so I suggest you use a 10.9 grade bolt. Now the belt's already secured and it can't fall down. Now I'm tensioning the tensioner by going into the direction of the arrow until this window is exactly over this notch and then I'm tightening this bolt to 26 Newton meters. Very well. Now I got to tighten the pulley wheel bolts up. In the vehicle, this is all a little more difficult. I can actually take my timing pin out of the side of the engine block. Right here. Remove the timing pins out of the pulley wheels. So I have to get the stress of that pin. There. Now I got to rotate the engine in the direction of rotation. I put the timing pin back in, tighten it, go against it. Now I want to have a line up between these pins again. This one fits. Really? Fits. Perfect. The timing is so easy. <laughs> there is a drawing of this pin on our Patreon page to download. Yeah. Is that true? So 30 degrees off, top that sender. <laughs> This is a big responsibility, okay? Because if I screwed up this dimension, the timing will be off. Oh my God. So we use a new copper ring and install this plug correctly to 40 Newton meters. I think it won't leak, okay? <laughs> Let's hope not. Do you get the NASA paint? Schraubensicherungslack. In our okay. possession for almost 30 years now. Yes. This stuff hardens out like plastic. It's really cool stuff and it looks so pretty. Oh, you got to do that better. Yeah, I've got to do it really nice. I paint like worse. Yeah. So you can see here it's all new. And here we have been in here before because that paint chipped off, you know, which is its purpose. Where else you want it? On the crankshaft bolt. Oh. Used tensioner. Yeah. So you happy with this? Yep. So the cooling fan spindle comes in next. That's a nice word what you just invented. Absolutely accurate. So they get torqued from 70 to 95 and Christian set the wrench to 80. So the first useless bracket will be mounted. I don't know if it's completely useless. If we don't put them on now, we're going to be in trouble later. 19 to 26. Good. New gasket for the camp covers. We made a little map here of Texas on how the bolts are to be configured for each timing cover. The bolts are all different. There are big ones and small ones and long ones and short ones. So I'm gonna puzzle this on here now nicely and see how clean I got that. So we made a video on how we cleaned this with the Heisenberg hack. So for example, if I have marked a long bolt, I put the long bolt in here and seed it into the into the ceiling ring here right here there is another long one marked according to my diagram so i put the long one in here nicely seated so i'm gonna put all this together off camera give it a little bit of oil on all the cams because the engine has been sitting here now for a while 
Now before I set the cam cover on, I gotta clean these corners out here. These are really sharp corners. Here and here, there are four places on each cover. And they get a layer of seal. sealant. Yeah. Because the seal won't press down into the corners properly. Okay. Now I got my cover here configured correctly with all the bolts in. And I'm shaking it and none of them fall out. I'm gonna check the corners here one more time that they nicely seated. Take my timing cover, carefully set it on here. Perfect. And wipe down the bolts to contact. So, yeah, we do the rest off camera. So we tighten these all to 11 Newton meters. Good. I think you didn't oil the chain. Oh yeah, the chain's gonna snap. <laughs> So we got a new gasket, new copper nuts. This is 10 millimeter pneumatic hose and I cut small pieces off and I put this on here and on here. This actually sent us the gasket and they will just simply burn away later on, okay? It will smell a bit in the car for the first couple of days, um, like burnt plastic, but it's a Land Rover, you kind of used to that. Oh my God. You take your freshly rebuilt turbocharger you of course have watched that video where we rebuilt this thing. Make sure I get this thing over my plastic pieces there. And I got some bolts here in the way. Oh, I should no. have taken them out before. I put it in the wrong hole, damn it. <laughs> now it's nicely seating. I secure it here. Good. Now I take a rest. Only three bolts. Okay, and I'm gonna tighten them from the inside to the outside. So making sure we torque everything to the correct spec. So you seat all your bolts and then you discuss this with your wife and then you torque. <laughs> so you can see here, this bracket is fastened down there. Here we got the gasket in between. I got these torque. I found extensions to fit my torque wrench. The one in the back down there is also nicely torqued. I installed stainless steel bolts. I hope I'm not gonna get any desktop mechanic comments that this is completely illegal on a turbocharger. What I gotta do now is install the oil return pipe here and also the oil supply pipe with a banjo bolt. <laughs> Which was missing. <laughs> and almost caused the divorce because I tie wrapped it to a little plastic bag here and I forgot. <laughs> <sighs> Well, we found it, it's right here. You put some oil into this turbocharger here. See, it winds it down. There it goes, right? This goes in here. And we tighten this to 30 Newton meters. I think that's good. The oil return pipe. There, that's good. Everybody needs to see that in detail. 11 Newton meters. Good. Brand new turbocharger installed. It is another beautiful Saturday. We wanted to continue our work now here. And guess what? A bolt snapped off. So Christian is not pleased that he has to start the day with <laughs> drilling out another bolt <laughs> that ripped off. That's an interesting setup. Oh my God, I hope it holds. Of well, we just spent 20 minutes looking for another steel clamp. That's not true. Everything was well organized. And <laughs> it's a good machinist setup. Yeah. Christian refuses to buy new drills. Yeah, this is my drill stash. It's bad. So again, searching for the right drill takes more time than the actual job he's complaining about. What is that? The extractor. Oh. I drilled it so the tension in the thread is gone. No, it's not grabbing it. We try a different extractor. <laughs> no, 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 not it's happening. not happening. Okay. 
Okay, so this is done. And assembly for today can start. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were looking for these two clamps, <laughs> Christian. We can finally put this thing on. Putting copper paste on the ETR valve screws. Yes, I'm not saying anything anymore. <laughs> Christian just yells at me every time I open my mouth. That is completely out of context. You let me run around the house looking for gaskets and the gasket was right here. The one she couldn't find. I found it. <laughs> After I was running around the house. And no, we can't blank our EGR valve. You serve five years in jail if you do that. So Christian wants to lecture. An EGR valve is about the most senseless invention on the planet of the Earth. Um, it's supposed to recirculate the exhaust gases under certain conditions back into the engine to burn them again. That has a lot of downsides. For example, that the intake clogs up with uh, carbon and also that the ignition temperature rises a lot. The way this works is before the exhaust gases enter, they run through this cooler here. There's actually coolant going in here or out here or vice versa. And then this valve opens and feeds the exhaust gases through the EGR pipe over into the intake. These valves fail regularly on the TDV6 engine because they simply are never used and they clog up. But they do go through a cleaning cycle when you turn your ignition off. You actually hear them going kokonk, kokonk, kokonk. Blocking the EGR system in Germany is illegal. So we have to put this back in place. They operate only under certain conditions and that is typically between 18 and 22 degrees when the engine has full temperature. You drive around at night, it must be full moon and you did not get a ticket for the train station. Blocking an EGR valve on a YouTube channel in Germany is a clear way to get a nice ride up and get into trouble. Now you... didn't you re... that is probably the one that broke off. And the sweat is bad. The sweat is bad. Oh, oh shit. What are we going to do now? We're going to use a helicoil. Oh, that's going to get a lot of comments using a helicoil in an exhaust track. Is my car going to burn down? No, it's no problem. I should have put it in right away in the workshop. Yeah, there was not much left. Get that somewhat straight. I mean... Someone, okay? Yeah, please. Okay, if it's crooked, it's the camera. Well, I get comments that the right height is not right, or that looks off, and that looks off. You can <laughs> judge that from a video. Yeah, Nossel. So, I got actually a special tool. Very we have properly. a special tool for everything. Guys. So, here now, see the first winding coming out here? Yeah. Yeah? And I don't want to fuck this up now. Yeah, please don't. That would be the end. It would not be the end of mankind. See the special tool released? Oh. And now I can wind my thread in here. Yeah. And the helicoil gotta be still buried in the back side. Yeah. And now I twist it backwards. And the helicoil is It not breaks to off the tab. Helicoil so is in. It's a beautiful helicoil. So that only took like, what, 10 minutes? Yeah. So this is now in. I like it when it makes clicking sounds. Perfect. And I think in a workshop, there are a lot of shortcuts, okay? Like Land Rover would not have fixed that manifold here. They would have just sold you a new one for 480. Yep. So we're moving the carbon build up. So the copper rings will seat properly. And cleaning the injector with scotch Bright. Look how beautiful they turn out. I labeled everything. 
Oh, and I just confused them. Oh, Christian! <laughs> okay, I'll put a little bit of grease oh on Oh my here god. To keep the ring attached to it, okay? I'm not really sure if they need to be inserted into the original port, but uh, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. And they should slide in nicely there. Perfect. Oh my god. That's a big step for me. It's a time. milestone in an engine we build. Yeah. yeah. Nobody has sent Vera yet the torque poster. Now I'm gonna buy one. So there's the fuel rail nicely protected from dirt. So I kept all these parts in plastic bags. Yes, I showed that when you were gone for small goods. Uh, nobody needs to know that. <laughs> and I ate something, of course. That is such a major milestone. Oh my God. Such a major milestone for yes. an engine which can burn down. <laughs> so everything is nicely seated, but not tight. In that condition, we got to tighten now the injectors very evenly to 11 newton meters. Okay, we're gonna tighten now the fuel rails first pre-torque to 50 newton meter at the injector and then pre-torque the fuel rail itself. When I torque this, I gotta make sure my craw foot is 90 degrees to my wrench so my torque is not off. Now I gotta do the rails. Now we're going to torque the injectors to final torque, 27 newton meters, and then the fuel rail to 27 newton meters. Everything tight. Good. I mount this cover now. I almost forgot because it's getting tight. Okay, we're going to mount this timing pulley here. 80 newton meter in first stage. That's good enough for me. I will use this bolt now a second time. So we're gonna center punch it once to indicate to the next owner <laughs> <laughs> that this was open once before. We're installing the high pressure fuel pump belt and it comes with the tensioner and also a new bolt. And the rear high pressure fuel pump on the 2.7 liter is not timed and install the tensioner. Oh, yes. you're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Well. <laughs> so we have replaced that belt before, like six years ago. And now I gotta pull the firing pin. Done. So I'm installing the fuel return line, which is a little bit fiddly. Because I'm gonna put a little bit of loop on these O-rings here to make sure they go in easily. And then all I gotta do is plug these in. There. Insert the security pins with a long needle nose plier. Seventeen years old, I know it would have been better to replace it because if it breaks, diesel runs out and the car burns down. So then here we can plug it in. Yeah, so once again, I think he married the wrong girl. He would just be such a perfect match for Sarah and you. <laughs> and I cut out a piece and then I'm replacing the piece. And he has a complete assortment of different tapes. Yeah. <laughs> See, I got three hands to take care of. And I can't do it right. He complains on every single cut. She cut it crooked, okay? <laughs> no, I don't. Now this is heat resistant fabric tape. Now all nicely done. Get it back into its final location here. Starting with the injectors because missing an injector plug is bad for the engine. I think this one goes here to the EGR valve. A nice replacement for that, like this. Injector 4, 
projector 5, projector 6. Wow, this is very satisfying, I gotta say. That's not what he said the last two hours when he had to redo the loom. So, closing the timing cover, can you believe it? One small step for man. Ooh. Oh yeah, I gotta talk to this. 16 indeed. Installing the crankshaft pulley wheel. The right way around. Yes, please. Oh my god. Uh, 23 newton meters. The water pump pulley wheel. And it served us well. So I'm not allowed to ask any questions. No, you're not. You, you, right now you're stopping all the work. So, well, that's, that's where the cooling van goes. Very well. So I did buy this new. Yes, ever since Joachim came into our driveway with exactly that part hanging on by a thread. So engine mounting bracket goes on. That's a lot of torque in my opinion. If I lose the engine. <laughs> It's, it's gonna fault. be your fault. Okay, inserting the dipstick and ignoring my wife's complaining. Christian almost wanted to take out the itchy R valve again. Yeah, you don't need a torque wrench for that. So that's what a dipstick looks like. And we said we're not gonna give a speech about every component because the video is gonna be six hours long. Installing the alternator mounting bracket. I'm done talking to you. Alternator goes on. I mean, what is if Sarah and Hunt ever watches one of our videos? Yeah, it she's going to have a heart attack. Completely embarrassed. <laughs> without a lecture. Very well. Done. That was not spectacular. <laughs> I think this engine will never start. There's the camshaft sensor still loose. See here from doing the cylinder heads? It's supposed to be adjusted too. It's too late now. Well, it will be a small repair if it doesn't start. Yes, but it you will know, be. Like three hours. Ah, uh, we rather invest that time now. Stalling. The servo pump. What's the English word for that? It looks all wrong. Let me tell you that. Only the TDV6 is a nicely balanced, pretty engine. Everything else looks just wrong. Because it's a little rusty. Only a little bit. Oh, they're gonna comment that. <laughs> I can do it again. <laughs> Don't do that. It's my engine. Oh, maybe the AC compressor. That would be a huge step. The AC compressor. Yeah, see, all I gotta do is take it out of this box. I won't clean it. No? No, I don't feel like it. Oh. So it looks like he's not done cleaning. Mounted. Yeah, and torqued? It's torqued. <laughs> Every single time we have that argument. I see this hose snapping in the Morocco mountains. In Iceland. <laughs> in Iceland? Yeah, okay. I should have replaced it. I yeah, but we still have time. You can order it. You order so much right now anyway. He installs my 30,000 kilometer old belt. This looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's a brand new belt, 30,000 kilometers. It doesn't have a scratch. Hmm. Something is not right. Okay, maybe I gotta go here first. Yeah, now it works. I'm sure it's sitting nicely. Yeah. Good. Oil separator goes in. That one is about the last piece now. Really? Yeah. One here. Oh yeah. One here. 
Oh, yeah. What about here is a hole on the Ichiar valve and here well, is a is hole? This is all in this box and this is the box which we called engine out. So once the engine is back in the frame, those pieces go back on. Now we got to install our engine hoist and then attach the clutch, the flywheel. Check this out. This is just beautiful. Everything is cleaned up, put together, ready to go in. Oh man. Somebody is really tired now. So the engine is completely together, ready to be dropped into the frame. We just got to put on the flywheel as soon as it's off the engine stand. And that completes our engine assembly video, which was our third one. At this point, we want to thank our patrons a lot for their support and... We'll see you next Sunday.